Dr. Alman Ward, uh, thank you very much for inviting our uh, invitation. Uh, I start by this question. You, with, uh, along with uh, Crescent Petroleum, uh, working in Kurdistan region within a framework of uh, uh, Pearl Consortium. How do you work in Kurdistan uh, region and how is the, the Consortium working uh, regarding your operation? So first of all, may I say thank you for the invitation to, uh, to speak to you. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor uh, to be with you on your prestigious uh, network. So um, we are the founder investors together with Crescent Petroleum in the uh, assets, the Pearl, what, have, what has become now the Pearl assets in uh, the Kurdistan region of Iraq, in uh, Chem Chamal and uh, the Cold War fields. Uh, and um, we've been operating those, as you know, since uh, 2000. And, uh, the, the, the original agreement was signed in 2007, the first gas in, in, in 2009. And um, we've been operating ever since uh, without a break. Uh, and we just celebrated our uh, 10th year anniversary of production uh, in, uh, in Erbil, actually, last year in November with a big celebration. Yeah. Doctor, uh, you, uh, in February, you signed a big deal uh, sale agreement with uh, KRG. Uh, can you please explain uh, the condition and uh, uh, what is deal deal uh, about? So we uh, undertook an expansion of our existing facilities, uh, which took place in um, November, or October of last year, October of 2018. And in relation to that, we had actually a gas sales agreement in place for the additional volumes of gas that would be produced from those. Uh, uh, that debottlenecking exercise that we took place on our existing plant. That was uh, initial gas supplies of up to 100 million standard cubic feet per day of gas. And we had a gas sales agreement in place that we signed with the MNR in uh, February of, that, of, of, of last year in relationship yes. to those additional gas supplies. Now we're going ahead with a further gas development. We are going to put two trains each 250 million standard cubic feet per day of gas supply yes. and what we have done is earlier this year in February signed a gas sales agreement for the additional 250 million that we hope will be coming on stream as a result of this new phase of development in uh, early 2022. So that is the, uh, the subject of, the, uh, of the, the new gas sales agreement uh, and uh, of course that, uh, that new additional supplies, like the 100 million that we supplied last year, is targeted towards uh, electricity generation uh, within the Kurdistan region. Uh, yes, uh, about your fells, uh, I, I want to know uh, all the gas you produce is come uh, from Chamshamal uh, block or fells, or you're just uh, developing other assets? So at the moment, uh, all of the gas production that we are currently producing it comes from the Core Moor field. The plan that we have for further expansion of 500 million standard cubic feet per day of gas, that will also come from the Core Moor field. That gives you a sense that uh, together, uh, the original uh, plant, together with the two new plants, uh, will produce nearly a BCF a day of gas production. And that gives you a sense of the scale and size of the Cormor field. That is therefore a development that is taking place just in the Cormor field and just in a part of the Cormor field. Of course the Cormor field is much bigger and that illustrates how much further potential there is for gas development in the Cormor field. We are not at the moment developing the Chem Chamal field. Having said that, starting last year we began an appraisal well of the Chem Chamal field, which has been very successful. Uh, and the result of the Chem Chamal appraisal well, Chem Chamal 3, we have now confirmed the presence of very significant gas resources in the Chem Chamal field as well. And we are currently in discussions with the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources with respect to developing uh, those resources through an early production facility. That's a discussion currently still. So do you think that the Chem Chamal field is comparable with uh, Cormor uh, regarding the reserve and the volume of reserve. Absolutely. There were some uncertainties that we had with respect to the reservoir development in the Chem Chamal field, but the appraisal well that we drilled, Chem Chamal 3, has established the presence of gas with actually a lot of condensate in it uh, and uh, also the producibility of the reservoirs.
we got very good production uh, rates and tests uh, from the Championship Mile 3 well. So, uh, in your idea, uh, how do you see <coughs> uh, the prospect of gas production in Kurdistan region by uh, 2022? Well, as I said, we, we, we certainly have a plan in place. We're currently going through the process of financing the, uh, the additional investments that need to be made to increase that production from 400 million standard cubic feet per day currently to 900 uh, stand, million standard cubic feet per day by 2023. Uh, and on top of that, as I said, we're in discussions with the MNR with respect to an early production facility on, on Chemchemal, which could deliver anything between 80 and 100 million standard cubic feet per day. So do you believe that this uh, can supply all the local and domestic demand uh, in Kurdistan region, whether it is uh, for electricity and whether it is for industrial means? Well, the additional 250 that we have signed the G GSA for with the MNR, that would produce in total 650 million standard cubic feet per day of gas. That is destined entirely for, for domestic power generation. Now, the second uh, train of 250 million, Pearl has the right to market that gas independently, and we are looking at different uh, potential markets uh, for that gas. But uh, one of those potential markets is to supply, in addition, uh, the remaining incremental need for gas in, in the Kurdistan region. Our understanding is that although there is the installed generative capacity to take 900 million standard cubic feet per day of gas in the Kurdistan region, there is not yet currently the electricity demand that, that would be generated with the consumption of all that gas. So if we were to sell the second tranche of 250 million standard cubic feet per day of gas domestically in the Kurdistan region, then some of that electricity will need to be exported from the Kurdistan region to the federal, uh, to the federal government. But as we know, the federal government is short of electricity, and that is surely an arrangement that, uh, that would be attractive to, to both parties. In addition to that, we've established that uh, local uh, consumers of gas, uh, steel and cement factories, have a capacity to absorb also 100 million standard cubic feet per day of gas. So we think the market, the domestic market for gas in the Kurdistan region is very strong. So uh, uh, did you uh, think uh, until now of exporting gas? For, for example, you mentioned there is possibility of extra uh, capacity for even uh, over the domestic yeah. use. So. Uh, how do you look at uh, exporting gas? Uh, so we are we are interested in uh, in the idea of exporting gas, particularly the second uh, train of 250 million standard cubic feet per day of gas. Uh, we think it is important to prove the concept of gas export from the Kurdistan region uh, to other places, but particularly of interest to us, of course, is Turkey. Turkey has a huge gas demand. 5 billion cubic feet per day of gas uh, and uh, a large part of that gas is supplied uh, from Russia. It's relatively expensive um, and of course in the interest of diversifying their sources of supply uh, we think that the Turks should be interested in, uh, in gas, a large uh, resource of gas that lies right next door in, in, a, friendly, in a friendly country uh, that, uh, that could supply in the initial phases some gas, but has the potential going forward to supply a very substantial uh, portion of Turkey's total gas demand. And, and being onshore production, being very close to the Turkish market, we believe that we are very competitively placed on, on a price uh, on the price level. Do you think that we can supply Turkey with uh, cheaper gas that uh, it gets so. from I mean, Iran and we, Russia? We would like to, you know, we would like to uh, direct up to 250 million of, of, of the additional gas supplies coming on stream, which is over and above the needs, domestic needs of the Kurdistan region. Uh, and we would like to see if we have the option of exporting that to Turkey. Obviously, there are issues on the Turkish side also. You need to find counterparties who have the license to yes. import the gas. But we think that we are very competitively placed uh, on, on a price basis. We are certainly, by, by nature of the proximity uh, and the relatively cheap infrastructure that would need to be put in place to achieve exports of gas to Turkey, we think we are very competitively placed to be a, a, a reliable uh, and uh, low-cost supplier of gas 
دكتور ارمان وارد يو نو ذات وي ذا كي ار جي هاد اجريمنت ان 2013 فور سبلاين تركيش ماركت دو ثينك ذات ذيس اجريمنت ستيل از ان بليس بات بليز انسر مي افتر ا شورت بريك دكتور ارمان وارد The Kurdistan region of uh, Iraq has signed an agreement in 2013 uh, for supplying and marketing its gas to Turkey. Do you think that uh, agreement is, is still in place? Well, I have to say that it was a it was a confidential agreement, so mm. I don't know any of the details around that except what was reported in the press, of course. But um, uh, my understanding was that the basis of that gas export agreement was around the. Uh, development of the Miran and Minabawi fields. These are, are fields operated by another operator in, uh, in the Kurdistan region. The uh, challenge with those fields is that they have extremely high uh, hydrogen sulfide, H2S content, uh, and that makes the development of those fields extremely expensive, uh, technically challenging, and you have as a byproduct of, of uh, producing the gas very large amounts of sulfur that you know, are generated, and there is a an issue about what do you do with the sulfur that is generated as a result of that, uh, that processing activity. Our gas, by contrast, has very low sulfur contents, therefore it's technically simple to process uh, and it's therefore not as expensive. And, and we believe that the combined gas resource that we have in Comor and Chemchemal, which we believe to be 75 trillion cubic feet of gas in total, in place volumes in the ground, uh, that these are a much better basis for, for establishing a, a gas export arrangement. Uh, do you think this pipeline, uh, gas pipeline, any possible gas pipeline uh, is uh, uh, practical in this moment or within uh, two, three years, uh, next two, three years? Yes, and I, I think that the bottom line is that, is that building pipelines is not technically complicated. Uh, we ourselves, uh, Crescent and Dana, uh, built the 175 kilometer pipeline from Cornwall via Chemchemal to the Erbil power station uh, back in 2009. So we have shown that we can do it and we can build pipelines of that, uh, of that length uh, and through the challenging terrain uh, that uh, is, in, is involved in, in that case. So building pipelines is not a complex issue. Um, Our understanding was uh, uh, in 2017, when we uh, signed the settlement agreement with the uh, Kurdistan regional government, that there was a plan at that time uh, to ask Rosneft to, uh, to build a common user pipeline. Uh, and that is still our understanding that the MNR would, would like Rosneft to, to build the infrastructure uh, into, which, into which our gas could be fed. Having said that, we have not uh, seen much progress being made in, in, in those discussions um, and we are going ahead with the first phase of our uh, field development plan, the additional 250 million centicube feet per day of gas that I discussed. We have technical solutions that will allow us to deliver that gas through our existing pipeline network. If push comes to shove, um, then it, it would be possible for another third party even conceivably ourselves, to come in and build that, uh, that pipeline uh, in place of Rosneft. It's a question about whether that's the right kind of business that we should be in and the right kind of use of, of, of investment money. Uh, does Rosneft or any other subcontractor of Rosneft contacted you for uh, this matter, for example, we, uh, we regarding their pipeline? We are discussing um, through the MNR, and so far we have not had any direct discussions with Rosneft on this matter. Uh, 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 about environmental uh, issues, uh, uh, today is actually th there is a, uh, too much saying, too much technical person, uh, academic saying that uh, we, we are a face of big environmental cha challenge and the gas is the very better solution for that. Uh, how do we see this idea and this uh, better uh, fuel for our economy, for the world economy, can assist your market and uh, your company uh, to develop further in this regard? Well, I'm absolutely convinced that gas is the uh, preferred uh, fuel of the future, particularly when it comes to electricity generation. And, and, and just taking uh, the Kurdistan region of Iraq as a case in point, 
you know, all of the gas that we've produced to date, 400 million cubic cubic feet per day of gas, has gone into power generation, which has displaced diesel, the, the consumption of diesel. In the 10 years that we've been producing in the Kurdistan region, we have abated 30 million tons of CO2 production from the burning of diesel. That's the equivalent of 5 million vehicles. In addition, we have saved the Kurdistan regional government over $20 billion of costs by displacing expensive imports of diesel with uh, domestic supplies of, of gas. So these are some of the examples of the, of the credentials that gas has uh, as a preferred fuel. Um, and we have plans to go further and expand that, and, and, and so those benefits will, will, uh, will continue to, uh, to accrue to the Kurdistan region. But what applies to the Kurdistan region also applies globally. If we were to replace all of the current coal-fired power stations with gas tomorrow, it's, it's, a, it's just a thought process, but if we were be able to do that, we would be able to reduce global CO2 emissions by 16%. So the total amount of CO2 emissions that we need to reach the Paris climate goals of 2 degrees centigrade is 21%. So by replacing all coal power with gas power, uh, power generation, we would be two-thirds of the way just with that one measure to achieving our global climate objectives. So of course it's not that simple, it's not going to happen overnight, but you can see the direction that we need to travel in you know, as a global community in order to decarbonize the electricity generating um, industry. Uh, regarding the Kurdistan region and uh, especially uh, uh, regarding uh, decarbonization process, what should Forza KRG do about that in Kurdistan region? Well, I think absolutely to further displace diesel consumption with further gas and I'm very proud that we in Denegas are part of that solution and that with the next train we will be providing all of, uh, of Kurdistan's uh, power generating needs through gas supply, which is, which is the cheapest burning form of, of hydrocarbon. But in, on top of that, I think there is also a role for gas in transport. Um, and uh, I think what's very interesting is to see and to observe what's happening, which is increasingly uh, drivers are choosing to convert their um, cars from petrol to compressed natural gas. That has a, a double advantage. Firstly, it's much cheaper to drive on compressed natural gas. And secondly, of course, it also has significant environmental impacts because CO2, the uh, gas, when it's burnt, has half the CO2 emissions and none of the nitro, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, and other particulate emissions that, uh, that, that happen when, when you uh, burn diesel or when you burn uh, uh, petrol. Uh, do you think that if CNG, for example, in Kurdistan region uh, developed uh, properly, how does it affect the demand for natural gas or uh, CNG? Uh, well, it will have, obviously it will have a significant uh, effect, but by comparison the to the total demand for gas for power generation, it's a relatively small incremental demand. Mm. So the existing plans that we currently have to expand production capacity in the Kurdistan region would be more than enough to satisfy the domestic demand for CNG in vehicles and transport. Very interesting actually. Regarding this uh, decarbonization uh, process, uh, how is the role of technology and how, how KRG for example use new technologies in applying for example very nicer and cleaner energy like natural gas in, in the region? Well, I think what's great is, is the open-mindedness with which uh, the ministry and, and, and the regional government is viewing technology and the emphasis, emphasis that they are placing on technology. We ourselves, as operator of course, are committed and dedicated to the use of the best possible technology in order to develop these fantastic resources uh, that are available to us in the cheapest and cleanest way. So it has a, it has a very important role to play going forward. Uh, coming back to uh, your operation in Kurdistan region, what do you do regarding uh, socially and uh, in assisting uh, those communities that are uh, nearby your fields and generally for the whole of the Kurdistan region? Well, we're very proud also of the track record that we have in, in uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainable development initiatives that we've taken. We recognize that uh, the license to operate 
is very dependent on the cooperation and involvement of the local communities in which we operate. And, and the ultimate goal of sustainability is to ensure that whenever the resource uh, is depleted uh, and we may leave as a company, hopefully in 20, 30, 40 years time, that we leave behind thriving communities whose quality of life has significantly benefited from our presence on the ground over the course of those years. And it's early days yet, but I'm very proud to say that we, we, take, um, we, we take a number of initiatives in the form of the supply of power generation to the, uh, to the villages in the immediate surrounding of our, of our gas processing plant. We provide infrastructure in the form of improving roads. We provide support in the terms of, of improving health quality in the, in the form of clinics in the, in the villages. Uh, and we've, we've been heavily involved in improving the quality of education by supporting, uh, by supporting school children, getting to school in the first place, and also the materials that they have in order to be able to improve their learning experience. Uh, Dr. Alman Ward, how about employment? How, how many percent of uh, your staff is local, for example? How many so are for a very high percentage of our staff are locals. Um, in, in, in the first 10 years of our um, uh, investments in the Kurdistan region, we provided employment to 20,000 people during the, fourth, during the course of the, of the development phase. After the development was over, of course, that has shrunk down to a, to a smaller proportion, less than 8,000 people. But um, you know, that is a significant increase in employment opportunities, and, and over 95% of our staff are, are, are Kurdish. Uh, Kurdish, Kurdish regional, from the Kurdish region. Yeah. Dr. Patrick Almanwar, thank you very much for being in Rodao. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. Uh, thank you My very pleasure. much.